And here we go. What's happening, everybody? Welcome to Mix of Texture. I'm Steve. And you might remember, uh, if you've been following last year, I talked about doing more creative, fun production in 2023. So that's what I'm going to do in this video, show you a couple things of the fun part of making tracks with sound design and building out the elements of the track, literally build up speaks and drops. Um, so you can see how I do it all in Session View. That's my theme for 2023, using Session View, having fun, designing sounds, making tracks. And then of course, I'm gonna record them into the arrangement and make final versions, of course, but that's not the starting place. The starting place for me is Session View. So um, here's the track. And do I get a live notification? One second, I want to make sure if anybody's commenting, I can uh, interact and watch. Okay, I got my monitor screen up so I can hear you and see you. So uh, let's start with the basic sounds. Um, if you look at the device tray in the bottom left, you will see ADSR baseline, ADSR lead, ADSR chords. That's one instrument preset, one Ableton rack that I modified to make these different elements. So let's start with what is the baseline instrument doing? What is that all about? It sounds a little bit like an arpeggiator or something, but what's actually happening is the amp envelope is looping. Analog, the instrument has this cool little thing. If you look in the upper right corner of this amp details, there's a little thing that says loop. That's the amp envelope loop mode, where it'll take the attack and decay envelope and loop it so you get a volume pulse. So you're looping the dynamic processing on the synth or the dynamics modulation. So it's not actually an arpeggiator. It's not a bunch of MIDI notes. If you look at what is happening with this. That's a long note. When you hold down the note. So let me tweak some knobs and you'll hear how this happens. Look in the bottom left where the decay time is shortening. Too short sounds a little weird for a bass. That's good for a lead, but not for a bass. I want this rhythmic pulsing. And then what I did was I basically beat matched that pulse to the tempo of the track. Here's a metronome. Okay. Just holding down that note and it's staying in sync with the metronome enough to work for long notes. What if I want to change the tempo of the track, let's say up to like 125 BPM? A little faster. Now, listen. It's drifting. The baseline is not matched. How do I fix that? We're going to shorten. I'll do it manually. By making the decay time just a little bit shorter, it's looping a little bit faster and staying with the BPM going a little bit higher. I saved some snapshots in the macro area so that I can play different tempos easily. So let's go to 110 BPM. Just for example, let's say you're making some kind of organic house stuff, right? I can go to my snapshot list, hit that button, decay time gets longer, and it's synchronized right away. So as you're playing with the track, you can get some... I took the whole track down to 110 BPM. The bass line still says, stays synchronized. And that might not be interesting for you. I think it's really cool because it's a custom instrument with a pulse. It's doing something different. It's fun for me to tweak and play. And don't forget, we always have the cutoff filter to mess around with. And after I tweak a little bit, I want to get it back, hit my baseline, reset, Snapshot and we're done. So that's a simple baseline. Might not be earth shattering for you, but it's a fun thing for me. I get bored of doing the same thing again and again. So I thought, hey, I like it when the baseline has a pulse. I don't want to use another arpeggiator. I'll try using this amp envelope looping thing to see what that turns into. Let's check out how that works with the lead instrument. Let me play the, the full version. Let me go back to 
120. That's the basic sound. What I would actually do in the track is something like this. So just by tweaking the uh, the decay time again, it's getting some variation, making it sound blippy, and you combine that with the filter to get some cool sound. Let me show you what that sounds like in a buildup. You can see the scene on the right. It says tweak ADSR lead here to get that sound of something happening in the track. Why do we want to do that? Well, the best buildups come from a sound you're already listening to that starts to freak out and change during a breakdown. You don't want to always paste on a white noise riser or, or a reverse cymbal crash for your buildups. Those help but it's much better to tweak the sounds in your mix using your synth experience. So here we go, what's this sound like? Here's our automation build-up clip. And then we come into the drop. Third, we have this synth chord instrument doing a diminished seventh swell. Now this one is, where are the notes? Here is the eight bar loop. And the notes are happening at the end of the eight bar loop to make a swell that leads into the next drop, okay? And for a pad, I like to have something with a really long attack time. <laughs> I love what music does. So uh, to make a synth pad, I put a long, long attack time. And this time I actually turned the release envelope, the looping envelope off, because I just want a long swell that does that. However, if you like to play and improvise and come up with interesting stuff by feel. Okay, I muted the melody, muted the chords. And now I'm gonna change the envelope on this one to make it more like a performance synth I can play as a chord. Now we got some stabs happening. That's a cool sound. Wait, I want to save that snapshot. How do I do that? Go to the snapshot list. Hit the new button down in the bottom left. Snapshot, I got variation one. I'm going to name it, um, what are those cool stabs, right? Okay, so um, what do we look at so far before I get lost playing around with my little jams making music? Um, I, to start off with, I wanted to show you some of my creative, fun techniques I use for making music before we get into the technical, misting, technical mixing kind of stuff. So we have our, um, no, cancel that. So we've got our upper bass pad, our lead instrument, and our synth chords, all of them completely tweakable so you can change the way the sound feels over time as a performance element or as something to customize it and fix it with the BPM of your track and make it sit in the mix. Another thing I wanna point out is when I was composing this, the MIDI notes are in different octaves. So this bass line is in the octave, um, the MIDI note octave zero, the chords are in octave one and two, and then the lead is in octave two and three. 
what I'm trying to tell you here is that you can design sounds that make it easy to mix. When you have notes in different MIDI octaves, they're automatically going to be in their own frequency range, so it's much easier to mix, meaning you don't have to fight against masking, frequency clashing, trying to pan stuff far apart or separate it in time. Instead, you have stuff that's built where your lead is up on a high octave, your chords are in the mid range, your bass line is in the low mids, and you still have, play, still have space in the bottom for your kick and your sub bass. So getting a good mix with a nice, big, clean sound can be much improved by just composing where you put things into the right frequency ranges and don't make them clash um, from the beginning. Now, I wanna keep this short enough that it's useful and helpful. So what I'm gonna do next is play through some of this track in session view. Um, I started with making these cool sounds and just having one scene with some, all, all the sounds that you want. My basic opening eight bar loop was like this. And at this point I'm stuck in the loop. I don't know what to do. I'm like, all right, sounds cool. Hey, Matt Schultz, whoop, whoop, stuck in the loop. Thanks for saying hi. Okay, I'm gonna reset my pad. I'm glad I noticed that. Let me reset my instruments. I love these macro snapshots. They make it so cool. So I just played the, base the, the basic loop. I'm stuck in the loop. How do you escape the loop? Well, I use scenes to build it out. You can see there's a little lesson in the master channel above that. But I'm gonna play through this and start with launch me at the intro, go through these drops and buildups, get to the ending. It'll take a couple minutes. The point here is I wanna show you how to literally escape the eight bar loop using the same ingredients and just making different combinations. Quick example, in the gap, there's no kick drum. That's a basic recipe for how to make a breakdown in a gap. But anyway, let's start playing through this and hear what we got. Intro, okay. Now, I might be rushing this a little bit. I'm not going to do a full minute long intro because you don't really need to hear that. What do we have so far? The melody says melody tease. So we're using some automation. And notice that the MIDI notes are muted right there. So there is a complete melody, but those notes are muted. So we don't hear the complete melody yet, which is why it's a tease. added a little bit of a percussion layer. Ah, uh, Matt, you're reading my labels. Yeah, 44 hertz kick drum. Yeah, that's pretty deep. Okay. After this, we're gonna get into a gap. So, so far we're in the mix in section. Maybe we're doing a mix with the old record. Now we're gonna get to a little gap. So what happens here, the bass line has changed. We're introducing a new, more interesting bass line. I'll turn my headphones up. Next scene, some stuff is gonna get stripped out. How many times have you heard me say, cut the hi-hats in the breakdown, right? So I want a scene where there's no hi-hats. The melody has an automation build. There's the chord swell leading into the drop. Now we're into the full bass line part. I like doing a drop where the melody's gone. We did a drop, it gets big and empty with bass line and beats again. Let's vary those drums. Now I want you to pay attention to this clip stack right here. Claps, hi-hat open. You can see a tambourine is coming up. And the next scene is gonna be the same drums, but the lead is gonna come back in. So we've been building it up, building it up. If you have any questions, let me know. I can always answer what you're asking after I jam a little bit. <laughs> What's in the next scene? Tambourine's coming in. Did I cut the reverb at the end? I'm not sure what reverb you're talking about or the end. In the breakdown? build up more automation. 
Well, my basic strategy here is um, playing each scene for eight bars. So if you see a drop that has four scenes, eight times four is 32, that's a 32 bar drop, which is about a minute. I even made a note in session view, tweak ADSR lead here to tell myself, hey, that's a buildup. You wanna tweak that lead to make sure you're doing cool stuff in the breakdown. And I'm always counting in my head too, right? Three, two, three, four, four, two, five, two, six, seven, eight, and next section. So we're after the main drop right here. The main melody is out. We're just hearing some uh, bass and beats. You can feel the track is coming to a, a close. The main stuff is dropping out. It's kind of still going, but things are building down. Let's go to the last section. I'm doing a variation of the sub bass. If you look on track two, you'll see sub bass says sub four. Now we got a dubby bass line happening. Another little lead synth moment. full bass line dub with the sub bass happening and the beats. And now this is where it gets really interesting. We're in session view, we're playing a track, we're at the mix out section, it's at the end of the music, five minutes in. As a DJ, this is where you're gonna be bringing in the next record, beat matching it and getting it ready for the drop. But what if you're playing live and the crowd is totally with you and everybody's into it and you don't wanna end the track? Maybe you even have a soloist like a trumpet player or an MC or a hand drummer. They're taking a solo and it's too soon to end because you don't wanna cut them off. What if you're not ready for the ending of the track? Now, if you're in the timeline in the arrangement and you see your track coming to a close, you better hope you have a marker to launch an earlier section or something. Otherwise, you gotta go up and try and guess where it's gonna be and, and try to synchronize it. But when I'm building tracks in session view like this, if I don't wanna end the track, I can use this gap scene as kind of a launch pad to go to an earlier part of the music. I'll do it right here. I just play that breakdown for like one bar and now I can go back to a main drop. I can go back to any other part of the song by going upwards. Let's do that again. And then I'm right back into another song section going through the whole phrase or whatever I want to do. And the song form becomes completely flexible where I can play it by feel, improvise, make stuff happen as I want to. I actually like the ending part was really cool. So now I can just pick scenes, go to where I want. I can see the scenes so I know what sounds are going to come in because I label my clips. Now I can create the ending by launching the outro scene. So the point is session view allows you to be completely creative in a hands-on way to flow with the track and make it move the way you want to. It's amazing for performing live, but it's also really good for finding the best way to do your arrangement. So when I wanna make this into a final studio version, what I'm gonna do is start at the top on the intro, hit the big red button and start recording. If I get bored and I feel like the intro is going on too long, I might skip that scene entirely, mark it red, boring, and go to the drop. So your arrangement, you don't have to fight against copy and paste editing, inserting silence in the arrangement or cutting out a section or trying to copy a section, paste it somewhere else, make space, paste it back in. That is like really difficult just to feel if it's gonna feel right. And then if it doesn't feel right, you gotta undo it all, like no way. What I wanna do is be able to play through the song sections, make sure they're going in the right order and they're going for the right length. Then I can record it into the arrangement and the, and the structure's done. I can mix, I can do automation, add the ear candy, and the whole track is finished. So it's a much more fluid, flexible way to produce and create great sounding music where it sounds like a person's performing it, tweaking knobs, having fun, and it doesn't sound like a logical, boring, laid out thing that you analyzed and like structured and everything. So, Matt, can you record what you're doing here into the arrangement as well? Yes, absolutely. You automate, you um, activate the 
automation arm switch, and you can even overdub stuff so that when you're recording, all the tweaks of knobs and everything get recorded into the arrangement so you can keep them. It's super fun and it's the best way to produce. I, I think it's awesome. So um, to round this out, what I'm doing here, that whole thing you've been looking at today is a session view production template. You know people make templates in the arrangement where you get a whole track, it's all laid out, you can swap the MIDI, make your own version, export it, and it sounds finished, it's mixed, it's done. Uh, this is the same kind of a thing, but it's a template in session view where we've got all the song sections done, you've been seeing the MIDI clips and everything that you have the option of changing if you want to. And to make it really clear and specific, I built a lesson inside the, t the tutorial. There's a template. No, I built a lesson inside the template. There's a whole tutorial built in right here where I'm talking and telling you what's going on and teaching you how to escape the eight bar loop by making song sections in session view. That's how hardcore I am about session view. I love session view. I think it's the best part of Ableton Live. Everybody should be using it. And I'm building session lessons to show you how to use it. Let me give you an example of what that looks like. Here's me talking inside the project. Let's get started. In the next scene, you're going That's an audio instruction in the session. Let's get started. In the next scene, you're going to hear the eight bar loop. Okay, so I built it in. That's the basic loop. What do we do next? All right, that's the basic idea. I set the clips to stop after eight bars so you don't get stuck in the loop. If you wanna hear it again, go up and play it again. Otherwise, go on to the next scene and you're gonna see the first technique for escaping the loop. Okay, so there is a lesson built into this project where you follow the scenes going downwards. We learn about counting to stay in the groove, two different scenes using a basic thing of the loop and a variation to create a longer interesting track instead of being stuck in the loop. Uh, you got activities, you got examples where I'm showing you what to do. Uh, topic called the beat and the buildup, which is essentially what electronic music comes from. And I have the whole lesson recorded into here. Two scenes, beat and buildup. Talk about what we heard, do a little review of what we're gonna do next. Your turn, buildups and drops. What did we learn? Counting beats, muting the kick drum, using scenes for variations. The whole lesson is built right here in this project. And what I'm looking for is three people who want to download this and play with it and give you some feedback on how it works. So you need to have Live 11 Suite. I built this in 11.2, so you need to have the new version. And please drop a comment. Let me know that you'd like to download this and play with it. The only price is feedback, meaning I'd like you to play with this session. Let me know how you liked it. Did it work? Did you learn something? Did you find out something about how to escape the loop by using session view? And give me some feedback on how this project works. My dream for 2023 is to build one of these every week or every two weeks with a new track, new sounds, new sound design lesson, new example of tweaking sounds to create buildups, and a new song structure in session view where you get a playable live set that you can tweak the sounds, you can have fun with it, you can turn it into your own track, and you get a lesson on how to do all of that built into the project. I think this is the best way to make templates because it's fun, it's flexible, it gives you more learning instead of just being a copycat producer and you come away with something you can actually play with and have fun. Uh, consciously, I'm talking more to people who play by feel and improvise and kind of like have a performing aspect to what they do. Uh, a lot of studio producers work only in the arrangement and they produce tracks in the style of like carving stone, chip by chip, slowly by slowly, finally getting it done. And this is a totally different style. Session view is more like spinning clay, wet clay on a pottery wheel where it's a living, moving thing and you touch it. And if, if you feel something, you just move your hands and go, and the clay changes and responds instantly. That's what I think of as session view is like clay on a pottery wheel. Arrangement is like carving stone that's cold and fixed. Session view is like spinning wet clay on a pottery wheel. And I'm looking for people who like to flow with the music and be able to change the song form do a drop when you want to, make a build up together with a performer who's doing a build up or just with your imagination when you feel like it needs to happen. That's what it's all about for me. That's why I love Ableton. So that's what I'm doing. Oh, I got a comment from X Girls XYZ, my hot photo here. Ah, <laughs> awesome. Totally great. So um, thanks for watching, Matt Schultz. I'll see you on Friday and track feedback. And uh, that's going to be it. For me, I'm going to end right now and keep this kind of short and snappy. And thanks for watching, everybody. If you have any questions, you can get in touch. Steve at mixedtexture.com. And I'll check you out next time. Bye.